Welcome, viewers of Cable 8 Access, Greensboro Television Network. Today we are at United Youth Care Services and we are bringing you education about substance abuse and mental health. Did you know that substance abuse can be defined as a dependence on an additive substance like alcohol or drugs that can be identified as cannabis, prescription drugs, tobacco, cocaine, heroin, and opiate addictions? About 20 million people suffer from drug and alcohol abuse. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, illicit drug use costs the U.S. about $181 billion a year. Meanwhile, excessive alcohol use costs the U.S. about $235 billion a year. Hi, my name is Sandra Grace, and I am the clinical director with United Youth Care Services. I am here with two of my colleagues, Ms. Chanel Lucas-Moore and Mr. Walter Aikens, and we're here to speak with you briefly regarding the opioid epidemic in North Carolina and worldwide. Hi, my name is Chanel Lucas-Moore. I am a licensed mental health and addiction specialist here in Greensboro. My name is Walter Aikens. I work at United Youth Care Services. I am a licensed clinical addiction specialist, and I work in a very interesting field. One of the things that we've noticed, the reason why, I wouldn't say the reason why substance use is such higher among children, but I think that it's increasing more because the prevention is no longer there. You know, when I grew up, we had dare, and you would not dare do drugs. <laughs> like, that Absolutely. egg in the frying pan, I remember that this is your brain on drugs. Right, yeah. and, and it's like, you know, back then you had those after school programs, you had so much more prevention, and now it's like what happened to that, our youth are just lost, they're just out there. Exactly. Uh, I can recall just as recent as 10 years ago where mental health services also included uh, community support services mm -hmm. which were utilized as a uh, service to provide mental health, well, it was a, it utilized as a service to assist consumers, whether they were adults or children, mm -hmm. with behavioral problems or mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And encompassed with that, you were able to do a, a variety of things. You were able to do psychoeducational teaching, you were able to do counseling, and you did case management, you did linking, referral. Went um, to the yeah, you went out into the school yeah. systems, mm -hmm. you worked with the parents uh, and the child and the teachers in the school system. Mm -hmm. And I think that might have minim minimized a lot of issues that we are now facing. If you look at the crime rate in 2008, or well, I would say the actually, well, even the crime rate, the crime rate as well as the uh, addiction rate from 2008 to 2018, I'm sure there would be a huge discrepancy. Mm -hmm. We don't have those wraparound services. I think everything that we're going through leads to another. If you look at addiction, how that addiction among our teenagers are actually leading to the crime rate, that's leading up to the death rate, that's leading up to the, the, uh, the overdoses, and you know, so on and so forth. I think all of it has a correlation. So the question is, how do we prevent it? It's a good question. Getting ahead of the game, and these kids are so knowledgeable now. Mm -hmm. They've got the internet, they've got school uh, friends, their peers, and uh, so they have easy access to the drugs. But if, I think if you'll find that a, if a youth was in taking judo or martial arts mm -hmm. or chess mm -hmm. club, you are athlete, a, uh, uh, athletes, mm -hmm. you would find less of them moving toward the drug use mm -hmm. because they're taught to uh, this body is beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, the mind is sharp, chess. I taught a character education course at GTCC involving chess for the GED students. After one semester, they wanted it mandatory. The powers that be, everyone needs to come through this course, and uh, but it was uh, it, it was awesome to see them the light come on their thinking, their charging. Uh, it was uh, that's prevention, and uh, I don't see a lot of that. Kids uh, getting on the bus, uh, where are kids bullied at? Ninety nine percent in school. Yep, mm -hmm. in school. So our schools yep. are not safe. Nope. Uh, for self esteem builders, and uh, I think a lot of the individuals gravitate to the drug use. Uh, to fit in, to feel okay, and uh, not really be bullied. Uh, it's like a little recruitment tool. Uh, oh, interesting story, if I may, if I have the time. I was teaching a group of men at a &T, uh, the uh, they were high school students that had been, it was the program Bennett College started it, and uh, middle college. Mm -hmm. 
and I had uh, about 23 students involving them in chess. And I asked them, uh, how many of you have been uh, arrested? No, no, how, how many of you have not been arrested? Out of 23 students, one hand went up. Wow. One. And they looked at him like he became a joke. Mm. You don't have any papers? You ain't never, what's right. you been doing? That's almost like a game and, uh, and I let them laugh, yeah. and, he, and I, you could see his, his self-esteem shrink. But when they finished laughing, I said, um, I said, y'all need to take a good look at him. You need to get his name and number. Because in 10 to 15 years, he may be the only one in this room that I can vote for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw his little self-esteem rise. Mm -hmm. Say, you may need a good lawyer. He may be that lawyer. Mm -hmm. So you may need to stay close to him. But uh, they think that uh, rite of passage has become uh, going to jail, going to juvenile. A rite of passage for young But where does that start, though? Uh, well, in the home, ugh, fathers have been rendered almost irrelevant, and a lot of my clients, I'm not trying to indict anybody, but in my clients, fathers have been rendered almost irrelevant. In chess, the king is never to be removed from the board. If you are locked up, you have been removed from the board. Absolutely. You know, so queens are left out here to struggle and deal with children and come visit you and put money on your books every week. It's ridiculous. But I, I fought a lot of men, and uh, the ladies can, don't, don't run a man off. If you, uh, but uh, a lot of men, they were, we're taught uh, to be responsible. And we're having babies, 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 about three or four different people. And it's uh, the, the family is the root of all this here. No man, uh, I don't care. I see men show up, boys show up in court. If I see a man group show up in court with a father standing beside him, that's commendable, absolutely. Right. Nine times out of ten, it's his grandmothers, his mothers, his yep. aunt. His absolutely. You're men right. have been, you know, 100% accurate. Show up in court, show up at the school, two or three men every time, just walk down the hallway, sign and put a visitor's badge on there, right. and see the respect level that. Little boys and girls will show you who is he, who is he, is that your dad? Mm -hmm. We're just here because we care. I agree uh, with Walter. Um, a lot of um, it starts in the, in the home, and it seems as though the, the prevention has been thrown out as far as the state's responsibility and the government's responsibility. And since they're not taking any responsibility with prevention, now it just seems like they're just helping with uh, treatment at mm -hmm. this point. There's no more prevention with mm -hmm. the after-school programs. There's no more prevention with the D.A.R.E. programs. Mm -hmm. It's now, okay, let's put a little money over here to treat. So now we have to leave it up to the families, the parentings, to do their job. And, you know, we see a lot of that here. Well, we have a lot of families mm -hmm. here um, where the parents have used or they have the mental health issues and now they're struggling and now they're asking for help. So I'm glad that we're able to provide that service here um, to help these families. But I believe that um, as a community that we need to be able to bring these families together and teach these parents on how to prevent their children from um, continuing exactly. the cycle exactly. at this point. I, I think the state has like totally like missed the boat. If you go and actually do an assessment on other states, uh, like the state of Georgia and maybe out in Arizona and maybe out in Tennessee, North Carolina at one point I thought was on track into help preventing some mm -hmm. of the issues that we're seeing. But we always talk about culture diversity and we always talk about meeting the clients where they are. Well, literally meeting the clients where they are, in my opinion, means just that. Every client, no one client or no two clients are the same. So what may work for client A may not work for client B and we should have the ability to um, flex those services so that it actually renders a greater um, outcome of progress for that particular client. And I say things like that. I can recall when we were starting back in uh, the, the privatization days of mental health and we were actually doing, uh, again, the community supports and there was a conversation doing an audit regarding whether or not taking a child to a party was a Medicaid billable service. Where if you're just gonna take a child to a party, let, you got two scenarios. If you're gonna take a child to a party and you're just hanging out and there's nothing um, psychoeducationally being taught there, I, I totally get that. But if you take a child 
who may have issues of self-esteem, maybe been built bullied, and things of that nature, and you take a case manager or a worker that takes a child to a social outing, because that's basically what a party is, a social outing, and they are prepping or uh, I think in those days we used anticipatory guidance. Mm -hmm. If they are teaching and uh, teaching that child how to interact, how to make friends, uh, how to build up self-confidence, and when the child is not doing what they're doing, uh, they should be doing, then you're able to go over there, come on, John, go ahead and, you know, go say hi. It's just the little things that actually make a difference. You'd be surprised what low self-esteem actually does for a person. That leads into the same thing with domestic violence. You know, most of the women with domestic violence, if you go and take a tool, the, uh, take a poll, the uh, underlying issue, low self-esteem, mm -hmm. probably past history of abuse or sexual abuse. Watching it, seeing it yeah. in the home, mm -hmm. experiencing it. So I just think that if there was some, if, if the state would just, go out and do surveys, but do surveys with everybody. Do surveys with, with the mom and pop shops of mental health. Do surveys with the clients who are actually receiving the service. What would help you? And when a person says, what would help me is if someone could give me a relief from being a single parent. Mm -hmm. That don't mean we're babysitting, but giving them a relief could typically mean taking that child out, assisting that mom to, uh, and on how to effectively manage her time so that she can spend time with that child, she can work, she can be more productive, she can uh, increase her ability of maybe furthering her education if that's something that she desires. It, there's just no flexibility in the services. And I think that because of a lot of providers, I can put that on it too, that a lot of the providers that were actually providing those services at that time, they totally abused it. And, uh, but I, I, again, I blame the state for that because had the state had some sort of standards mm -hmm. put in place where it be First, like we're doing right now you sitting around the table First and start you have money to at the problem. present yourself so mm -hmm. that you know what you're doing then I think that it, you know a lot of our kids a lot of our uh, adults will pretty much be in a better predicament at this point it ain't gonna cure everything and, it, and it's a small piece of the pie but also instead of having problems like this it might have been like that but it's just a small piece that's actually gone I believe um, the stigma just behind mental health yep. um, and substance abuse plays a big role because now um, look at the laws they're trying to make. Um, if you receive food stamps, you can't do drugs or you can't smoke marijuana or you can't, you know, it, they're putting stipulations and stigmas on things and I think it's causing a lot more problems than it is preventing problems. That's because they don't understand addiction. <laughs> and correct. And then now here you go, you want to take Medicaid. Um, and health insurance away from families who needs it and now they can't get the services they need so where do they go for help they go to the streets they go to the, uh, the person on the corner yep. they go to a family or a fr uh, friend who has these drugs yep. who's using it too so I believe that the stigma of wanting to get the help get the treatment um, and then you're not being able to get it because of now all the, the rules and regulations that's preventing you from getting the services that you need interesting interesting where well, there's dollar bills connected, there will be someone tracking, or it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, or, and it's, that, well, we develop abuse, uh, uh, ways of getting what we want when we want it. And uh, so for every law that's going to be changed, uh, right now what, what the prison is probably the number one mental health provider, the jail system, because the, the drug court uh, has alleviated some of that uh, recidivism. But we've got, <clears throat> we don't understand uh, uh, with youth developing the art of cultivating social intelligence. Mm -hmm. Social intelligence, because they're socially challenged. Mm -hmm. We take a kid to the first grade and dump him off at a teacher and you have not prepared this kid for what he's embarking mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. It starts at home, Absolutely. not in the first grade Absolutely. teacher. Absolutely. And so uh, it's just sad to see how ill-prepared our children are. Uh, the lack of discipline in the school system. And so uh, at one time, the definition of education uh, in the dictionary mentioned character development. That's been gone since the 70s. Mm -hmm. So they modified the definition of an education. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just supposed to, it means to draw out. Mm -hmm. So uh, every one of these kids have something in them, but a teacher, a uh, society has to find it, mm -hmm. find it and draw it out and have right. them want to perfect this gift. Right. And uh, we're force-feeding individuals stuff. You got to learn this. You got to do that. 
and I don't think we are searching for their, their talents. Someone said in the first grade, how many of y'all want to be uh, artists? Every hand went up. Third grade, how many of y'all want to be artists? 40% of the hands went up. Sixth grade, how many of y'all want to be artists? Two hands go up. So we're breeding out this creativity. Given the chronic opiate addiction in the state of North Carolina and worldwide, what are some of the trends that you guys are actually seeing? Um, one thing I've noticed is the younger crowd are um, widely using these substances and a lot of it relates to the music, it relates to the rappers, it relates to social media. Um, it's cool now to do perks and mollies and, and to be high and go to school intoxicated because, you know, that's, that's the trend, that's what's going on. Um, so I'm definitely seeing usage uh, a lot in the younger adults. I'm also seeing the opiate use um, that has spiraled out of control due to the high uh, prescriptions that has been given out here, um, not just here in Greensboro, but all worldwide. There are so many people that are addicted to opiates due to being um, given them for such a long period of time and now their body is going through withdrawals, they're rejecting um, other treatment and so um, definitely the opiate crisis is an epidemic here in North Carolina as well as worldwide. Opiates are not new, it's just new to this new crew and uh, it's very devastating because kids are trying to experiment for various reasons, peer pressure, because it's available in their cabinets, mother and father's drugs, and they're taking things uh, for excitement, for thrills. Uh, it is a cycle. If you go back uh, 1956, uh, this 1972, uh, Greensboro's Vice Squad was number one in the nation in 1972 because wow. of heroin. Wow. And uh, usually Charlotte is the most uh, criminally uh, formed place in North Carolina, but in that 1972, Greensboro had it, had the population. Vice Squad was High Point, Winston-Salem, Greensboro, just heroin everywhere. And uh, so now this new generation has discovered the opiates that I think the pharmaceutical companies found out that there's profit there, and now everybody is trying to legally produce opiates. Uh, they want drugs to come off drugs, and I'm have an opinion about that I'll share maybe later. But this is a, a very ugly trend of what we're doing to our youth without watching them and counseling them and mentoring them early in life. Out of these kids because we are force feeding them into stuff that we think that they should know. Right. They've said about a fifth grade uh, level of math, you have enough math to become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. It's a fifth grade level of math. I mean, numbers are numbers. But uh, we have uh, these curriculums in school that you have to jump this rope and, uh, in order to qualify for this and get, mm -hmm. you know, so, and, and it's stressful, and depressing. It it and is. that can create, uh, well, I need a drink. You know, that's, you, you create uh, stressful situations for, for students and they go off to college unsupervised now. And uh, my goodness, now their peers become their educators, believe it or not. That is true. Well, don't mention, um, well, don't mention, well, not to mention that if you end of second or third grade and you don't catch on quite mm, as mm. quickly as Lucy, did, and oh, then, oh, labeled. you need an IEP. Oh, this child is slow. They're yeah. behind. And if you're hyperactive, oh, yeah. oh he, he's he, ADHD. Yeah. You and, need medication. Right. So it's, it's starting at a young age, and that's because the lack of knowledge, the lack of, of the lack of um, understanding of what mental health is, and what's you know, and just the cultural diversity behind it. Number one, because everybody does not learn the same way. You know, everybody doesn't understand um, how things are, and everybody's mental health symptoms are not the same. Just because you have bipolar and he right. has bipolar, don't mean right. you all have right. the same symptoms. Right. You know. I think that by the between the first and second grade, there should be a type of class that teaches a type of etiquette where young boys uh, relate to young girls, uh, young boys and girls relate to authority, to teachers. Uh, we're not getting that. Mm -hmm. And uh, parents come over to the school when there's a problem. And it's too late then. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, there should be something to teach. When I was in the first grade, uh, they taught us, oh God, we had a square dance. Uh, and I didn't want to hold no girl's hand, but we had to. And right. uh, it was respectful. Uh, Parents came out, man, enjoyed it, and uh, it was fantastic. You know, I remember to this day the first grade. 
but uh, we were taught and prepared how to do this, and on that night, we performed. Right, and we talk a lot about One thing that I have noticed uh, as far as trends is that the substance abuse goes right along with mental health. Um, it's very rare that I see someone with a substance use disorder that doesn't have a co-occurring mental health um, disorder al also, and usually it's people are starting to self-medicate with uh, some type of substance due to a mental health diagnosis, whether it's alcohol, it's marijuana, crack cocaine, uh, just regular cocaine, meth, ecstasy, and now opiates have um, become the number one choice for dealing with pain as well as uh, mental health pain, mental health thoughts, crisis. Um, so that's a, a big trend that we are noticing here in North Carolina is the co-occurring substance abuse and mental health um, diagnoses here. Absolutely, Chanel. I also uh, would like to say to add to that is that she's absolutely right. Um, like here at United Youth Care Services, we provide um, two levels of substance abuse treatment. We provide substance abuse comprehensive outpatient treatment, which is one of our high levels of care. And we also provide substance abuse intensive outpatient uh, treatment, which is one of our lower levels of care. The difference between the two programs is just the number of hours that you will actually uh, be engaged in treatment. Uh, the wraparound services in those programs are pretty much identical. And she's and what we've seen here, as Ms. Chanel stated, is that a, a lot of our consumers actually come in the door with co-occurring disorders, uh, where it be opiate addiction, along with uh, major depressive disorder, or bipolar disorder. We've seen schizo, uh, schizophrenia, um, schizoaffective disorder, mm -hmm. uh, cocaine use, alcoholism. alcoholism, absolutely. Typically, when you have persons who begin to engage in the use of addiction, whether it be alcohol or any type of drug, lots of times it starts off as recreational use. But more often than not, there are underlying issues of maybe trauma, or sexual abuse, or physical abuse, or uh, maybe grief loss, or things of that nature. And these are the things that we are charged with actually treating while we're here, um, providing those services for the consumers, which could be, become quite difficult at some, at, you know, sometimes. Absolutely correct. Um, when individuals start taking drugs, there, there's usually an emotional stagnation. You stop developing emotionally and mentally. Uh, and we don't use the word retard, but it retards certain developmental aspects of the brain, of the mind, of the body. And uh, a lot of youth don't see this. Uh, they don't see 30 years down the road That's true. Uh, when you start smoking cannabis. And then they show up here mm -hmm. with uh, cannabis or cocaine addiction, uh, depression. Mm -hmm. uh, bipolar, mm -hmm. a whole host of things that uh, they do not relate to drugs. And they'll still tell you that, uh, especially the, the youth, oh, there's nothing wrong with smoking reefer. Well, just give me 30 years and see where your ambition is and uh, your uh, intellect. Uh, it's not going to be very in a very stable place. I can just about guarantee mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So getting back with the trends, um, why, I would ask you all, do you think opiates is such a, a big epidemic now? Because, you know, it was the crack cocaine epidemic back in the what, the 80s, I believe, and it didn't get as much attention as the opiate crisis is right now. So why do you think that mistaken? Uh, well, in 86, uh, it did get real nasty. 86, for about four, seven years, it was just very vicious. Uh, I had never heard of daytime carjackings and before mm -hmm. that, you know, just a baby in the back seat and someone just jump in and take the mother's car to, uh, behind crack. Now opioids uh, slows the individual down, takes the nervous system down, and uh, uh, the opiates uh, for people who usually want to get off the merry-go-round, just slows them down and gets them to a spot where they can uh, just mellow or fit in. Uh, I had a teacher that said that an individual will find what drugs fixes him. And uh, in the 70s, we heard of this fix, he needs his fix. But I hadn't put that together until he told me, he says, people will gravitate to what makes them feel balanced, mm -hmm. homeostasis, uh, with an outside influence. And people will seek it, and when they find it, they will gravitate to it. Mm -hmm. And they'll do a host of other things, too, when they can't get it. But uh, this uh, lack of uh, self-esteem, self-respect, and being able to uh, be an individual. So peer pressure, uh, wanting to be like them, and uh, 
a lot of things motivate us to uh, our, our youth to seek this high, to step out of our reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very sad that we have not helped them form a reality that is individualistic, holistic, and healthy, emotionally healthy. And that's true. I uh, also think in culmination with that, some of the things that also may contribute to the opiate crisis could possibly, this is my theory, okay. I think it is an over, uh, over prescribing of you know, prescription oh, yes. medication, overuse of uh, prescription medications. You know, nowadays we all treat every little thing that's going on with mm -hmm. us. You know, back in the day, a long time ago, our parents would have these home remedies and they were home remedies for uh, pain addiction and headaches and mm -hmm. colds and things of that nature. Now, a lot of the, uh, a lot of our consumers, um, a lot of people throughout the United States, we have such highly skilled physicians and we have all these new, these new medications on the block. So we run to the doctor and we want to, uh, to alleviate the yeah, problem. we want a med to make us feel good. We don't want to hurt anymore. Fix. It's a, a fix it. Mm -hmm. And what they don't tell us is that we may mm -hmm. use something to fix one thing, but that it's thing that we're using to fix it is going to start something else. So we're going to be addicted to it. Right. If you look at the medications that you are actually being prescribed, there's always a side effect mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. whether it be, um, uh, I don't know, conjunctivitis or something to that nature. I, I recall... May cause swelling of the tongue. A absolutely. Uh, death. So you kind of like weighing your options. Yeah. You kind of like, okay, yeah. I'm going to fix this problem, but I got 15 different possible side effects, and that's just depending on your immune system, how whether you're allergic to the medication or not. They've right. got commercials that will tell you in 15 seconds how this will help you sleep. Right. And it takes them two minutes to tell you of the side exactly. effects that may come exactly. from this. Uh, no thanks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. If you have a substance abuse issue, someone said all of us that are doing drugs are going to quit, but some of us are going to be alive. Is that you? There are issues that we've gone over and we've studied, then with the mental health issues, the substance abuse, our youth, uh, opioids, uh, a new wave to the new group. It's been around a long time. It's been devastating. It has uh, wreaked havoc on societies, cultures, uh, entire countries. Substance abuse. Well, there's hope, and there's help. We at United Youth Care Services, we provide uh, service for those who are dealing with mental health issues, substance abuse. Sometimes we help with housing. But we're serious about what we do because you're worth it. 